Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ozzy and if this is your first time here, you're welcome. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the checklist for the EB2 NIW green card application. But if this is your very first time here and you haven't subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below. And if you'd like a notification every time I upload a new video, please click on the bell sign. So today I'm going to share with you the checklist for the EB2 NIW green card application. Now I applied for my green card under the EB2 NIW category and what it is, is the employment based second preference national interest waiver. So the very first thing that you want to do is to go on the USCIS website and check out the eligibility requirement. And the reason why I say that's the very first thing you should do is that I can tell you everything I know about filing for a green card. I could walk you through the process, but if you're not eligible, then this doesn't apply to you. So you want to go to the USCIS website and check to see if you're eligible or not. I'm going to put the link to the website in the description uh, portion of this video, as well as on the screen right now. And so go ahead and make a note of that, visit that website and make sure that you're eligible to file for a green card under this category. So the very first thing that is mentioned is that you have to have an advanced degree. You have to show evidence of your advanced degree. An advanced degree is having a bachelor's degree plus five years of progressive work experience. If your document is not in English, you know that you have to get a translation, a certified translation of that document. Make sure you get that in English, all right? The very next thing is to show that you have exceptional ability. There's six different uh, examples that are provided on the USCIS website. They only require that you meet three of these um, requirements right under the exceptional ability the very first is again to show that you have an advanced degree as the very first requirement so you, if there's six requirements listed on the USCIS website they only require you to meet three of these right so the very first is to show that you have an advanced degree you can show your college transcript you can show your degree certificate whatever document you have that shows that you have an advanced degree Go ahead and show that the second evidence is to collect recommendation letters from your previous employers as well as your current employers to show that you have at least 10 years experience in your field of specialty right the third requirement is to show that you command a salary that is competitive and is indicative of your exceptional ability. The fourth is to show that you have some form of license or certification that qualifies you to practice in your field of specialty. The fifth is to show that you have some measure of achievement. So do you have awards, any documents that show that you have received recognition in your field? That's the fifth way that you can show that you have exceptional ability. Now the sixth, or not the last, is of course to show that you're a member of a professional organization. They only require that you meet three out of these six, or if you have other ways of showing that you're exceptional, these will do as well. So for me, I was able to show I was exceptional because I met three of these requirements. I have an advanced degree, I have recognition from my peers, and I also am a member of professional organizations. If you've gone through the requirements and you feel like, okay, I have some of these, but not all of them, the next thing I would suggest that you do is to start getting your evidence together. You want to start compiling your evidence and getting ready to file for your green card. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't have any awards. I don't have anything to show that I am exceptional in my field. That's okay. Like when I started putting together my application for the EP2 NIW green card, I didn't have everything put together. I know I had my advanced degree. I know I was a member of some professional societies, but I didn't feel like I had all the awards that I needed to have, or I had all the um, evidence of the things that I have done. So I went ahead, I started volunteering. You know, there are always opportunities to stand out. If you're in the arts or if you're in business, you can go ahead and put your work in for um, competitions. You can go ahead and present your work at, you know, your conferences, things like that. Write abstracts, go to conferences, present your research and these are things that will help you really really stand out. Now in terms of being a member of professional societies, I know that a lot of postdocs, a lot of grad students are already members of professional societies. I also encourage you to seek out memberships of societies that don't just require membership based on the payment of some mem membership dues, right? Seek out professional bodies that the eligibility requirement is based on merit. Now, after you've looked at the USCIS website, you determined that you are eligible to apply, you started gathering your evidence together, I'll go ahead and send out those requests for recommendation letters. In the last video, I told you how to ask for those letters and how to follow up for those getting your recommendation letters back. And so at this point, you want to go ahead and send out those requests for recommendation letters because this by far takes the longest time to get in. So while you're working on the other evidence, you want to have your recommenders working on those letters so that you're able to manage your time better, right? 
Now the next step is to write a petition letter, right? Write a petition letter and this will help you address every single requirement that you have. That letter is simply a letter to your, the USCIS officer who is going to be reviewing your case. You're going to state the category of green card that you're applying under, which is the EB2 NIW. You're going to state each requirement for that green card process. You're going to state the advanced degree. You're going to put in there how you've shown that you beat that requirement. Next, you're going to move to the second requirement, exceptional ability. In the form of a letter, you're going to state each requirement and also state how you meet that requirement, right? So once you write that petition letter, you attach all your evidence, you're going to fill out a form, which is a form I-140. Now you want to go to USCIS website, download the latest version of this form. Now the reason why I say always go to their website and uh, download the latest version is that they're always bringing up changes to that form. They're always updating their forms, they're always adding things, taking things out. If you don't fill out the latest form, they're going to return your application to you. That's going to waste your time. So always make sure that you fill out the form. Don't download a form six months before and then turn that in, no. If you're going to turn in your form this week, go to their website this week, download the latest version of the form, fill that out and submit that. Right? You can also simultaneously also fill out the form I-485, which is an adjustment of status form, but I didn't do it that way. I went ahead and I filled out my form I-140. Once that was approved, I then filled out another form, which is a form I-485, which is petitioned to adjust my um, non-immigrant status, right? So that's the way you do it. So you, you make sure you're eligible. After you make sure you're eligible, if you're not eligible right now, start to map out things that will help you become eligible. Now, once you put all your documents together, you want to write a petition letter. In that letter, you're going to state how you meet all the different requirements. You're also going to fill out a form I-140. You're going to do that with the latest version of the form. You're going to put your application documents together. And you're going to send that off to the correct mailing address. Now, it's important that you mail it to the correct mailing address. For the different states, they have different centers that they want you to mail your application to. And so you go on the USC website and make sure that you're picking out the correct address and you're sending your form there. Now to make this process so much easier, I've provided a free ebook that will help you with all the different requirements that you need for filing for your green card. It will show you the eligibility requirements. It will also show you the general steps to filing for this green card. If you're interested in getting this ebook, go ahead and look in the description bar below. I would list um, a link to get the free ebook and that will really, really help you get your application off the ground. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope I've addressed a few of your questions. I know filing for a green card can seem very difficult. Trust me, it's not. It's something that you can do because I did. So on the next video, I'm going to walk you through filling out the form I-140, how you can fill that out. I'm also going to tell you about how you can file concurrently, how you can file for your application for the green card as well as your application to adjust status. A lot of people like to do that together because it saves time. I didn't do it that way, but I'm also going to tell you in the next video how you can fill out your form I-140 as well as how you can submit that and how you can fill out your form I-485, right? So thank you guys for listening. If you have questions, if you have comments, go ahead and type them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to address your questions. Have a nice day, guys. Bye-bye.